click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous topic we have discussed about the EAN that is effective atomic number and now in this topic we are going to talk about that how we can calculate the effective atomic number of certain elements of a complex. So this is what I am going to talk about so now let's get started. So friends for that we have the first example that is this complex. So we understand that is this is nothing but a neutral complex but it would be very much easy to calculate the effective atomic number for the nickel over here. So the talking about the nickel that is we have that is the atomic number of nickel which is found to be 28. So in this case we have got the value of z as 28 but for that we have to also calculate the value of x as well as y. So let us understand that is how we can calculate the value of x. So x is nothing but the number of electrons that have been lost by the metal atom that is during the oxidation. So in this case we understand that is the nickel which is in transition metal obviously it will have a variable oxidation state depending upon the ligands attached to it. But here basically the ligand that is present is 4 moles of carbon monoxide and the overall charge on this complex is found to be zero. So since the carbon monoxide or the carbonyl here it is a neutral ligand so therefore there will be no charge on it and that is how basically the complex will have zero charge. So in this case the value of x is found to be zero because in this case the central metal atom that is a nickel it will not undergo through any oxidation reaction and that's the reason that is no electron has been lost in this case. So now let us talk about the value of y. So each ligand contributes two electron to the central metal atom but in this case we have four ligands so that's the reason that we will have four into two eight electrons and these eight electrons will be contributed by the ligands to the central metal atom in this case it is nickel. So now for that let us understand what is the value of EAN that is what we could get. So for that we have a formula that is we understand that is Z minus X plus Y. So for Z we have got a value of 28, for X we have got a value of 0 and for Y we have again 8. So 28 minus 0 is 28 plus 8 it has been found to be 36. So in this case the EN of the central metal atom that is the nickel it has been found to be 36 which is nothing but the atomic number of krypton that is a noble element. So this indicates that is this complex is very much stable in nature. So talking about the next example we have. So this is an example that is what we have and this is a complex which has a positive charge on it making this to be called as a cationic complex. So talking about the atomic number of the cobalt, so the atomic number of cobalt it has been found to be 27. But let us understand that is how we can calculate the value of x as well as y. x is nothing but the oxidation number of the cobalt in this complex so for that let us understand the calculation. So in this case the oxidation number of cobalt is suppose if it is x and the total number of ligands that is what we have is 6 into NH3 and the overall charge of this complex has been found to be plus 3. So therefore we could say that is since the NH3 that is the ammonia is a neutral ligand so therefore we could say that is it will exhibit no charge and that's how basically we could find that is the cobalt has an oxidation number of plus 3. So this cobalt will have an oxidation number of plus 3 and that is what I am going to write here. And now let us understand what is the value of Y. So in this case the total number of ligands that are been surrounding the central metal atom is 6. So each ligand contributes 2 electrons to the central metal atom. So here basically we have 6 ligands so therefore overall the central metal atom will acquire 12 electrons from the ligands. So this is what we have a number and based on that we could easily calculate the value of EAN which is found to be that is Z minus X plus Y that is 27 minus 3 which is 24, 24 plus 12 which is found to be 36. Again this number is what we have got and this is nothing but the atomic number of crypto which is nothing but a noble element which also indicates that is this complex is stable. So now let's move to the next one. So talking about the next complex that is this is a complex and again this is nothing but a cationic complex that is what we have but we can also calculate the EAN for the anionic complex but for now let us understand that is how we can calculate this one. So for that we have the atomic number of the central metal atom that is in this case it is zinc it has been found to be 30. So talking about the value of x as well as the value of y so we have to calculate the value of x over here. So suppose if we don't know the value of 
that is the oxidation number of zinc because this is a transition element and obviously they have a variable oxidation state but here we can find that is there are four moles of ammonia that are surrounding the central metal atom that is zinc and the overall charge of this complex it has been found to be plus two so that's why we could say that is the value of x is nothing but plus two and this nh3 is nothing but uh, a neutral ligand obviously it will have no charge on it and that's the reason we could get the oxidation number of zinc in this case it has been found to be plus two or we could write it over here as x is nothing but two so talking about y so this y is nothing but the number of electrons shared by the ligands to the central metal atom so therefore we have four ligands and each ligand share two electrons so four multiplied by two that means eight electrons so i could write it over here as eight now the next thing that is the formula for en we understand that is it is nothing but z minus x plus y so z minus x in this case it has been found to be 28 so 28 plus 8 36 so again this number indicates not only the atomic number of the noble element but it also indicates that this complex would be very much stable so now let us move to the next one so here we have the next complex and this is again in any complex and for that suppose if we are talking about the value of z that is for platinum the atomic number of platinum it has been found to be 78 so let us talk about x as well as y so the platinum has an obviously it is an transition element so obviously it will have a variable oxidation number so therefore we could easily calculate the value of x if we understand that is the nh3 they are six moles and they are surrounding the platinum atom and the overall charge of this is plus four but nh3 is a neutral ligand so obviously it will acquire no charge on it and that's the reason that we have got the oxidation number of the platinum in this complex which is found to be plus four and here the value of x is four so talking about the next one that is y so in this case the total number of electrons that have been contributed by the ligands to the subtle metal atom in this case it has been 6 so 6 multiplied by 2 it is nothing but 12 so now we can calculate the value of EAN and that is nothing but Z minus X plus Y which is found to be 78 minus 4 which is nothing but 74 74 plus 12 it has been found to be 86 so this 86 number is nothing but the atomic number of radon which is in fact a noble element and that is how this complex is also stable so now let's move to the next one so next is this one and it is very much easy after doing all those calculations so now let us understand this one also so in this case we have the central metal atom that is chromium and chromium has an atomic number of 24 so talking about the value of x as well as the value of y over here so we have to calculate the oxidation number for the chromium over here and in that case we'll get it to know that it has been found to be zero the reason behind that is because so we are basically co that is the carbonyl group as a ligand and this carbonyl group is a neutral ligand so that's the reason there will be no charge on it and overall the chromium will have no charge on it and that's the reason the value of x is here zero and talking about the y in this case it is that is the total number of electrons that are being shared by the ligands to the central metal atom it has been found to be 6 multiplied by 2 that is 12. so again in this case we could find that is the en is nothing but having a value of 36 which is very much equal to that of the atomic number of krypton so even though they don't have the effective atomic number that is 36 or 86 or any other number which resembles the stable electronic configuration or which resembles the atomic number of a noble gas element still those complexes are very much stable in nature so for that let me explain you that so here i'm going to talk about the few exceptions for the en rule so in that case this are the complex here basically we can find that is the iron that is fe has an effective atomic number of 35 so even though having a value of en as 35 it is not following the en rule but still this complex is found to be stable in nature so talking about the next one that is copper so even in this case the copper complex that is what we have over here even though the value of en is not 36 and in fact it has been found to be 35 still it is stable in nature and talking about this complex so in this case the platinum has an effective atomic number that is 84 but it should be 86 so as to follow the en rule but still it has been found to be very much stable so therefore this are the few exceptions that is what i have mentioned over here and that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood that is how to calculate the en for the central metal atom in a complex and that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope i'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe to channel thank you so much